it's bad. You know, you know, after a week of that, simply coming out and seeing sunlight and seeing the grass and seeing birds, it, it was like amazing. And that's just after a week of, you know, sensory deprivation. Um, and then, so, yeah, so we, we, we carried on. And then finally one day, you know, every day they kept saying to me, oh, you'll be out tomorrow, you'll be out tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. And I must admit, I'm with them. at one point, uh, after I'd been there on about four weeks or so, a feeling came over me of um, acceptance, as in, look, I'm here. There's nothing you can do about it. They could hang you tomorrow. They could jail you for life. You could be released. But none of it's in your hands. So, and this real peacefulness just washed over me, kind of letting go where I was just existing now. I was simply existing. I was eating, drinking, and there was something really nice about it, like a real clarity about life, where I, you know, I was really living. Or even though it's hard to describe, you know, no, I'm no, dead no, on the inside. Well, I don't know what you mean, but I can, I can but kind of intellectualize that, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that letting go. Of, yes. Well, and it's almost like I can transfer it to when we talk about uh, God's hookum. Yeah, yeah. Acceptance. It was this kind is of, the situation. Yeah. 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 I'm, your, I'm your vessel. Take me where you want. <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, and it was a good feeling. Uh, but anyway, all of a sudden, one day the, the, the cell doors opened and they said, you can go. It was and a how long thing. have you been in the cell by this point? Just over four weeks. Fucking hell. And I'm assuming it's not like a British prison, even no. though British prisons are still pretty <laughs> shit. But no. like just to give people who aren't necessarily too familiar with what it may have looked like, um, just give us a brief description yeah. of it, please. Well, well, the first one, the one in Lundy Courthouse, that wasn't too bad. That, the, the prison was basically the old British governor's house. So it had an old Victorian fireplace. It had, you know, it was like an office or whatever. But it was held, it was designed to possibly hold a family, you know, 10, 12 people. There were 66 prisoners in there. Uh, and basically every inch of space on the floor when you went to sleep was taken up. You were literally cheap by jail with people. Uh, the light was on 24 hours a day. Bear in mind, this was May, so outside the temperature was like 44 degrees and stuff in Peshawar. Uh, and you've got just got this, you know, I mean, you watch Midnight Express. It was like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of yellow crumbling cells. Uh, towards the end, when I thought I was brewing least, they put me in the worst cell possible. They put me in a cell which was literally five foot by five foot. When you put your hands up, the, the fan would catch your hands so you couldn't have room to move. And I was, it was designed for three prisoners. Uh, and there were seven of us in there. And what was funny was, well, it wasn't funny, but there was this re there was this old guy in there, old Muslim guy, and he hated my guts. Anything I'd touch, he would throw it away because I've I've contaminated it as a non-Muslim, uh, and he, he just couldn't stand me. Um, anyway, I start. I remember asking some people. Said, "Well, he's fucking eighty. What the hell is he doing in prison?" And they said, uh, "The man's got no honor." I said, "Well, you can go to jail for having no honor. How do they work that out then?" And they said, "What it is is." He had, his first wife had died. He took on a young bride, much younger than him. He'd caught her uh, in bed, literally with somebody, a younger man. And now under the tribal laws, he's supposed to kill the wife and the lover. He only killed the lover. So he's basically been jailed for not having killed enough. <laughs> because he didn't kill the lover and only kill, sorry, because he didn't kill his young wife, but killed her young lover, he was jailed for breaking the code. Why didn't you kill the lover as well? You've got no shame. Oh. You've got no honor. And so you can actually be jailed for not having killed enough. Um, My mind is a short circuiting, but no, fair enough. I, I see where they're, what, yeah, they're, yeah. their rules, I guess I see it. I see it for... And then, then there was this poor Nigerian guy there, black guy. And I swear to God, the, 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 the guy, the other prisoners, you know, they're all from villages. They've never left their village. They don't know anything about the world. They really thought this black guy was an animal. They were touching his hair and and they were asking me, yeah, yeah, he's a he's a bunda, you know. Uh, in, in that and I said, well, you know, just like in Karachi, they're a bit darker because they're close to the equator. Well, this man lives right on the equator. And they just couldn't get their heads around that this guy's human. And when I left jail, he was still there. I remember I, I asked him, I said, What the hell are you doing here? And he gave me a bullshit story. He, he, he I said, Where are you from? He goes, Nigeria. I said, What are you doing in Pakistan? He goes, I've come here to seek political asylum. 
who the fuck goes to Pakistan to seek political yeah, asylum? Nobody. <laughs> Especially from Nigeria, like that makes exactly. very little sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone basically for the drugs. The tribal areas is where all the heroin processing labs are. Oh. So, yeah, and, and yeah, so anybody who's in the tribal areas generally. So, everyone in the tribal drugs. areas is smoking hash and getting high on opium or, <laughs> and like other poppy derivatives. And yeah. like, no wonder the Americans couldn't beat them. They're just high as fuck, <laughs> innit? Like, they're just like, like, as in, as in, because I think what you're, what I've just got, what I've picked up on as you've been talking is they've got a shit ton of balls. Like, their yeah. balls are just absolutely massive, but yeah. they're also highly loyal they're highly yeah, kind of yeah. loyal to one another and i think you you're not messing with that really are no. you and especially when you then throw in a bunch of drugs and loads of guns like yeah i, I remember the isi people when they, they they call the the area the tribal area in uh pakistan in urdu is called ilaka okay ilaka get the strange place the out of bounds place the mysterious place the place you don't go to and, and i remember when the isi interviewed me and they, they looked at me and said what the hell was you? we don't even go there unless we're in groups of 10 plus what the hell was you doing there how have you managed to stumble into the tribal areas and you're not even a muslim yeah I said, yeah, well, yeah i said i don't know you know <laughs> they were saying you know did the tribe kidnap you i said no 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 they, they protected me and it was like how how has this happened um but yeah it was you know looking back at it i can say it was a brilliant experience i mean you know where do you make friends like that you know Who's going to go to jail for a stranger like that? So just going back then, how did you get out? Like what secured you getting out? Obviously they said that they figured out you weren't a spy, but they could have very, yeah, they could have been, yeah, they, they could, could have just been like, anyway. fuck it, we'll just keep you yeah. anyway. You're British, like you're collateral <laughs> yeah. as soon as, well, yeah, yeah. you're also a bargaining chip at that yeah, point because yeah. you're British, right? Yeah. So how did you get out? And did, like for argument's sake, I think some people may assume having a British passport may have worked in your favour. But did it actually, and what helped you get out? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what it taught me is that there's two types of British. There's the white British, and then there's the rest of us. And we're not as important as the white British when it comes to our lives and protection we're afforded by the British government. Now, I'm in, bear in mind, I'm in Lundy Corthel, in the tribal areas, the most dangerous place in the world at the time, by myself. It took the British Embassy 12 days to visit me. And when I asked the guy, why the hell is it taking you so long? He says, well, you know how it is, Randy. Our security is really bad. And I was thinking, you're the bloody ambassador. I'm here by myself. Think about my security here. You know, if you think security is bad for you and you're the ambassador, what about my security? Uh, and then he came over and he, he made it pretty clear. He said, look, he didn't say it like this, but he basically was saying, look, we're only here because you're a journalist and your newspaper's making a lot of noise and getting politicians involved. And there's a campaign to release you. Uh, if you weren't that, you probably wouldn't be here. Um, and again, in a very man matter of fact way. So, look, they're accusing you of uh, of spying. Uh, you know that at the worst they can hang you, but uh, you know, uh, uh, if or they could jail you for life. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, I really need to know that. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, if they do jail you for life, we guarantee that we'll visit you at least once a year. I said, all right, thanks very much. And then what really got me was he looks me up and down. He goes, have you been tortured yet? And I thought, well, actually, I haven't been tortured, but the way you're talking about is the torture coming. Um, and that really threw me because I was thinking, no, I haven't been tortured, but you're saying, well, you haven't been tortured I should yet. be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, was yeah. Almost, he was almost disappointed that I hadn't yeah. been. And so that didn't leave me in any great condition. But one thing he did do, the fact that Agora had come to see me raised my street cred in the jail, that this guy really is British. This guy really has got connections to politicians. We better not torture him because he may be a somebody. But if I'd been white, I can guarantee you that ambassador, I wouldn't have spent a day in jail. I'll tell you what, a comparison. The other prisoners were laughing at me. They said, look, just before you got arrested, a French journalist got arrested in exactly the same circumstances. He didn't have the paperwork. He'd gone into Afghanistan, was trying to get back to Pakistan. His ambassador came immediately. He didn't spend a second in jail. Why the fuck are you still here 12 days later? And nobody's come to see you. Says it all. Yeah. Says it yeah. all. So it really made me think, yeah, I'm as British as my passport and that's about it. So whilst you're in prison, obviously you've got the protection of Noshad and his friend who's, I don't know why they've decided to join you in prison, but ha like a proverbial hat off to them for that. Um, how hairy does it get? Besides the situation when the guy calls you into the room and kind of, I guess in in to paraphrase, essentially asks you to convert. 
um is there any other point where you're like fuck this might go this might go south quick every, every day I'm a, because basically the cells i was being held into were remand cells so every 20 minutes a new prisoner's coming or someone's going oh, and shit, every new prisoner yeah. that came i'd think is this the al-qaeda hit squad that's been sent to get me is this the one is this the one you know and anybody somebody looks at me funny why are you looking at me funny um you know, you had people who were opium dealers, you had people who were Taliban, you had people who were opening Al-Qaeda. And every time that door opened, I'm on my toes thinking, is this the guys? Are they the ones? Um, and so, yeah, I, every day was, are they, they going to get me tomorrow? Are they going to get me today? How are they going to do it? And, and so, yeah, any new face would startle me. And that's what I said, if no shadow wasn't there, I would have been buried <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, within, yeah. within days. And they stayed with you for the whole four weeks. Yeah, never left my side for a minute. All right, so that's the end of another episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed putting it together. If you want to support the work that I'm doing, then consider becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member via the links in the description below. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully I'll see you in the next podcast episode. Bye.